Urgent Medevac, uh, it'll make your heart jump. You go from zero to 150 miles an hour in about 0.2 seconds. Uh, we don't get planning, we don't get a heads up that somebody's gonna get hurt. Uh, it's, you know, once, once it happens, then it's, it's nonstop. Running to the aircraft, gearing up, doing all our pre-mission checks just to ensure that we have all our weapons in place, our goggles in case the flight goes into night. And uh, getting the calls into tower and launching the aircraft direct for mission. So we typically get that done anywhere between 10 and 12 minutes with a 15 minute max. Once we've touched down on ground at location, three to five minutes uh, to get out of the aircraft, make contact with the patient, the ground medic, receive a brief report, and uh, load the patient onto the aircraft. Once the patient's on the aircraft, once again, it's dependent upon the location. We could have anywhere from two minutes to 30 minutes to get the patient to the uh, forward surgical team in the hospital. In the meantime, we will administer as many medical interventions as necessary to save the patient's life uh, to improve the patient's status in our care. Looks good. Uh, whether that means to continue to administer tourniquets that are not in place, add additional bandages to control bleeding, IV administration, uh, get fluid resuscitation for the patient, brief vitals, time permitting, and that's all done with, like I said, anywhere from 2 to 30 minutes with the average, I would say, probably about 12 to 15 minutes. Heart rate is 68. Pulse off is 96. All righty. Normal sound is sort of... When the aircraft touches down, uh, from the moment it touches the ground, it's a controlled chaos from our perspective. The guys on the ground have been jumping through hoops for, for up to 15 minutes, uh, saving their buddy's life, getting them ready to, to load on the aircraft. Uh, as soon as I'm able to get out of the aircraft, put boots on ground, and uh, locate where the patient is located, make contact with the medic, uh, it's equivalent to walking into the middle of a hurricane or a tornado. It, it's nonstop, the, the, uh, the noise from the aircraft inhibits our ability to communicate. Uh, you have to work extremely hard to get a clear message of what's going on from the medic or from the, per the uh, commander on ground and to see what's going on with the patient. Got the, uh, all right, got one medevac off the ground. Roger, one medevac, wheels up. All up there, I can do it, I'm already up there. Roger, do it. Go ahead, all right. I allow myself to have a disconnect because I, I don't necessarily know the people. I can empathize with their situation and who they are and where they come from. But because I see right. so much, and we as flight medics see so much in such a short period of time, some of the most traumatic and catastrophic injuries that any one person just seeing it once in their life could affect them for a long time. We see multiple on a daily basis, a weekly basis, a monthly basis. Uh, we have to maintain a disconnect to, to continue to help the next person. His pulse has been in the mid 80s. O2 set was 100% on a 12 liters per minute. Patient expresses gratitude for your service. It doesn't matter how hard the circumstances or how threatening the territory that you go into. It's worth doing it again because you know someone is appreciative of what you've done to save their life and to get them out of that area where they thought they weren't going to live. Even though my, the results of my job and what I do are not necessarily tangible because I don't see a patient's full recovery, uh, I know that I play a critical role in saving someone's life and getting them back home to their loved ones. The flight medic is a person that uh, chooses to do this job because they have it within themselves to give for someone that they don't know and probably will never know.